Hey boys and girls, it is Math Week 4, Wednesday, April 8, 2020, and we're going to continue dividing decimals on that Google slide. But before we get to that, I thought we'd better do a little math talk about what we already know. Now you might be wondering, why isn't Miss Howard talking to us? Well, actually, it's because of these two guys. I had to give them a bath tonight, and any time I give them a bath, it's more like, well, I get a bath too. So, I'll say hi. Hi again. And let's get going. Okay, yesterday you were dividing with a uh, decimal number in the dividend, and they looked something like this. And you went through a slide that suggested that you um, think about this as a whole number and divide 7 into 3. No, it won't go, but 7 will go into 35 five times and put that 5 over the, the second digit there and multiply 5 times 3 is 35 and have 0 left over. But then you have to remember you have to bring that decimal up and line it up and then ask yourself, should I put in a 0 to complete my answer? And so these are the types of problems you were doing yesterday. But in today's lesson, they are uh, including a decimal number in our divisor, too. So let's take a look at a problem that we would face in today's uh, Google Slides. This is 3 and 5 tenths divided by 7 tenths. And we do these types of problems a little bit differently. In the, in the slide, they're going to talk about doing a decimal dance, and that these are partners with each other, and this decimal dance, this one's going to go to the right one, and if that one goes to the right one step, this one takes a step to the right also. And they're going to explain in there why this works, and they explain that, well, each of these parts is multiplied by 10. I want you to think about something that you already know. You already know that this decimal could be represented in a fraction form. 3 and 5 tenths divided by 7 tenths. And you also know about the identity property, that if I multiply a number by another name for 1, it is still equivalent to that number. All right, so when I multiply 3.5 times 10, you all know what's going to happen. That decimal point shifts one point to the right, and so I end up with a 35. And so I shift this one also by multiplying it by 10 and end up with 7. And so essentially what I'm going to do in this problem is think about it as 35 divided by 7. Because I've moved my decimal point here, and I've moved this decimal point over to the right. And then I'm going to solve it by saying 7 will not go into 3, but it will go into 35 five times. 5 times 7 is 35. Subtract, I have 0 left over. Now I still have this decimal point right here that I'm going to move straight up. I'm lining it up into my quotient, and I end up with the answer of 5. So this tells me that 3 and 5 tenths divided by 7 tenths is 5. Okay, let's look at another example. If we had the problem 4 and 9 tenths, and we were going to divide that by 7 tenths, I first look at my divisor and say, yes, I have a decimal number here. That means I'm going to have to change it to a whole number, and I can change it to a whole number by multiplying it by 10. When I shift that decimal point to the right, I am multiplying it by 10. So I'm making it a 7. If I multiply this by 10, I have to do the same thing to my dividend. I'm going to shift it to the right one place. That's the same as multiplying it by 10. Now, this looks like a jumbled mess here, but essentially what we're doing is we are changing our 7 tenths to 7. The 4 and 9 tenths is now 49 with the decimal point over here at the end. The decimal point's right there, too, just like it's a whole number. And I'm going to solve this like a whole number problem. 7 will go into 4. No, it won't, but 7 will go into 49 seven times. 7 times 7 is 49, with 0 left over. All right, so my answer is 7. If I wanted to bring my decimal point straight up, I could put it right there, which is the same thing as 7. 
So the things that you already know that you're applying, well, you already know the steps involved in a long division problem. You know that you are going to find how many times the number goes into the dividend, find the quotient, multiply, and subtract it out. You know that a number times another name for 1 is still equivalent to itself. And you know that any whole number, even if you don't see the decimal point on it, let's say, for example, 8, a decimal point comes at the end of that number because that separates it between the 1's place and the 10's place. So these are things that you already know that you're going to apply to dividing with decimal numbers today. Okay, so let's take a look at our decimal um, Google slide.